Good afternoon, welcome back to another video with a guy and his projects. Today we are working on my wife's 2014 Ford Expedition XLT Extra Long Edition 5.4 liter V8 engine with the transmission and uh, that's what we're doing today is transmission work. So this thing has started humming and whining recently um, and typically when I buy a vehicle, we've owned this for just over just under a year now, so right about a year. Typically, anytime we buy something, I run through all the fluids. This one, I haven't done the transmission fluid because it looked like a pain in the butt and I just really hadn't felt like doing it. It's been running fine, so I haven't looked into it, I haven't worried about it. But all of a sudden, it started humming pretty bad upon acceleration, so I figured I would take a look. So, today's video, we're going to one, replace the transmission pan with one with that has a drain plug, because why do we not put drain plugs on transmissions, guys? I don't understand. It's so messy and annoying. A drain plug is super easy, doesn't add hardly any cost. And uh, come on, guys, let's just put drain plugs on transmissions. While we're at it, let's put dipsticks on transmissions because come on, guys, you're making it miserable. All right, rant over. Today we are replacing the transmission pan with a, one that has a drain plug. We're going to do a fluid change and a filter change. Um, and we're just going to see if that helps with the humming, see if it makes anything better, see if it makes it worse. And uh, we're going to go from there, but that doesn't matter here or not. That's what we're doing today. So a couple of notes. Typically when I film a video, I say this is all doable in your driveway with basic tools. This one's a little bit more difficult, mainly because you got to check the fluid while it's running, while it's hot with a dipstick that's about half an inch, more than half an inch, but it's about a finger width away from a catalytic converter, which of course is 9 billion degrees when it's running and hot and you got to pull this dipstick out and it's a pain in the tushy wushy. So it's kind of a little bit more difficult to do this. You have to be under it while it's running. So it is doable, uh, but I would use the tallest jack stands you can find to purchase. I would also jack up all four corners so that you can shift through the gears and uh, let the tire spin without having to worry about you know it going anywhere. So that would be my advice. That makes it a little bit more difficult to do in your driveway, but again, it is doable. Uh, you just gotta work with it for a minute. All right, so let's get started into replacing the transmission pan, fluid, and filter. First thing you're gonna do is, I like to do transmissions cold. ATF has a tendency to expand when it gets hot, and I like to measure things when I pull it out of the transmission just to see kind of where it was before. I did not check the fluid level, so I don't know what kind of level this was actually at before I started. Uh, but that's kind of why I check how many cups I drain out later. To get started, I have all this fluid linked down in the video description below as well as the pinned comment. Uh, I bought nine quarts of transmission fluid. Yes, it's a mix. There's some AMSOIL standard, there's some AMSOIL premium, there's some uh, Valvoline. Uh, it's all going to get mixed together because that's what I bought and that's some of this I had in my cabinet some of this I purchased online some of them I found at Walmart and O'Reilly so it's just what I have not a big deal so we got a mix of fluids we're going to be putting in there it's not something I'm overly concerned with I'm not worried about it and that's just what we're doing guys all right so first step is going to be to remove the pan or at least let the pan start draining there's a whole bunch of 5 16 bolt heads I crack them loose with a ratchet before I jump in with the impact because sometimes the impact has a tendency to just break them off and uh, I can usually feel if it's going to break with a ratchet and I can spend a little more love and care tearing it apart rather than having to drill them out later. So that's what I do. I crack them loose with the ratchet and then I go to the impact. Some of these are a little bit harder to get to. I had to use an extension on some and then others I used a wrench uh, but I got to them all. It wasn't overly difficult. Uh, just be patient. Grab a wrench, grab some extensions and your uh, ratchet and you'll be all right. So while you're removing those, pick a couple to leave in, kind of strategize where you want the fluid to drain, make sure you have your pan in place, and go ahead and leave a couple in so that you kind of direct the fluid. Um, there's no RTV on this gasket, it's a reusable metal gasket with a little tiny rubber strip on it. So as, as you start loosening screws, uh, the pan's not going to stay in place, it's going to kind of fall off, which means you're going to have fluid start leaking as soon as you start pulling them off. 
So again, have your pan in place and try and catch what you can. I stuck a screwdriver into the pan about the time I got to the point where I wanted to direct the flow of fluid. Um, I wanted the fluid all in the right place and that's what the screwdriver helped with. I kind of directed the fluid to the right corner so that I keep my pan. I have a small pan, a large pan would probably be helpful, uh, but that's what I had to use. So that's what I used. Uh, something also to note, your, your fill port, which is also your dipstick tube, uh, you should probably try and break that loose before you pull the pan off, uh, mainly because if it strips or you get stuck into a spot where you can't get it off, you're going to have a bad day. Um, your only option then is to, well, you're just going to have a bad day. So before you pull the pan off, go ahead and try and break that loose. Just make sure it comes off. That's a 19 millimeter wrench, I believe is what I use. Mine came off just fine. So as you're draining your fluid into your pan, uh, it's going to make a mess. It just is. The pan is very long. My drain plan is very short. So, uh, yeah, it made a mess, but catch what you can, clean up what you can't. Once you have all the fluid drained out that you can, go ahead and take your last couple screws off, hold your pan with your arm or hand, and uh, just see what you can do about getting the pan out. The gasket should come with the pan. Be careful, I'm gonna pull it down slow. The filter is just sitting there. I don't like that design at all uh, because there's nothing holding it in place. It just sits there. So your filter may fall out while you're pulling the pan. It may stay in there and fall out later. It might just stay in there. Just be conscious of it and uh, be aware that it might fall out on you. So if your filter didn't fall out, go ahead and pull it out and then clean up all your mess. You're pretty much done with all the messy stuff at this point. So get yourself cleaned up. Something I did notice is there's no magnet on my pan. Um, I didn't know this was a thing, but apparently, there's no magnets on a lot of transmissions nowadays, which I find odd. The transmission pan for this vehicle has a spot for magnet to go, but no magnet. So what I ended up doing is I called Ford and they said, yes, your year did come with a magnet. And this is a 2014, uh, but he had to order some out of Denver. I told him not to worry about it. I went to my local hardware store, bought these magnets. This is overkill. You don't need two big freaking magnets like I'm putting in here, uh, but I'm putting in two and the idea is in a couple weeks I'll go through and I'll drop this pan again and see what kind of stuff is on there to see how much metal's been floating around in the fluid. Uh, if I can, I don't know. Anyway, I put two big magnets in. So important to note is I put these magnets in next to the drain plug. What I found out later is the filter, that's where the filter ends up uh, sucking up or dumping fluid out of <clears throat> whichever direction it flows and I couldn't get the pan back up so don't put your magnets right there if you're doing what I'm doing uh, I ended up putting them up in order towards the uh, oh shoot which direction would it be the rear of the vehicle where there's a big open spot in the transmission stuff and uh, they're out of the way there so that's where i ended up putting them you'll see that in a minute all right so now we're about ready to go ahead and put everything back together clean your gasket up um i bought a new one from ford just in case i had to replace it uh i ended up reusing the one i have so i got that one for next time uh, but go ahead and clean that off the best you can. Uh, clean off the mating surface on the transmission. Uh, clean off the mating surface on your old pan. If you're reusing your old pan, I am definitely using this new Dorman with the drain plug. Also linked down below if I didn't mention that already. So before I put the new filter in, I realized that the little gasket on the nipple that sticks up into the transmission was still in place in my transmission. I verified, I looked at the old filter, it was missing. So I just used a pick and then I switched to a screwdriver and I was able to pry that gasket out of place. Um, I want to use the new one that came on the new filter, of course. So I had to get rid of that. And this is where you'll see I moved the magnets to the other side of the transmission pan and they fit much better there. So I would recommend doing that. All right, so your new filter can just kind of set in place. Like I said before, it doesn't latch into anything. It just kind of sits there. So it might fall out on you, so be careful. Hopefully it doesn't, but it'll sit there. If you bump it, it'll probably fall out, so be careful. Put your gasket on your new pan or your old pan, whatever. Get a screw through it if you'd like either way. Put it up, hold it in place while you get a couple screws into it. Um, I went ahead and snugged those two screws up just to hold everything in place. And then I went through, I didn't tighten them, I just snugged them. And then I went through and I got all the other uh, screws in place just so that, you know, they're all in place. We're almost done now. 
All right, so once all of these bolts were in place, screws, whatever you want to call them, I torqued them all to 10 foot-pounds. 10 foot-pounds seemed to work. I don't know if that's accurate. That's just where I was comfortable. This fly is about to make me go berserkers. And that's where I did, that's where I put it in 10 foot-pounds. I don't have any leaks right now, so I would be okay saying 10 foot-pounds is good. All right, once you got all those torqued down, we're on to the fun st stuff. We can just about fill it up. So I measured my old fluid and it looks like I dumped out five quarts. Five quarts, uh, from what I understand, this should take eight to nine back in. Uh, and I was a little concerned, but I figured, well, it's too late to do anything about it now. Maybe that's why it's humming. So I went ahead and I have this little drill pump. It's like a vacuum pump almost, but it's not a vacuum. It's just a pump, self-priming pump. I will link one down below. You just hook it to your drill, cut a couple pieces of hose to fit the line you want. I stuck one end of the hose up in the transmission, another in the transmission fluid bottle, and just hook your drill to it and just bzzz. It is not the fastest way to do this, but it is way faster than almost any other way. And you don't spill any like you do when you fill the pan up priorly. Uh, I highly recommend getting one of these if you have a drill to work it. Uh, I will link one down below. It made easy and clean work of filling the transmission back up. So I put in, I wanna say about seven quarts and then the pan started to overflow. I just assumed I was going to full eight, uh, but I got seven and the pan started to overflow. It was overflowing through the dipstick tube. So at that point, I went ahead and I fired it up. This is where having all eight, all four tires off the ground is helpful. I got in it, I fired it up, I cycled it through the gears, I let the tires run in both reverse and drive, uh, set it in neutral, did that a couple of times. Um, and then I went back down and I was able to put another quart and a half in, which was, uh, what, eight and a half quarts? Because I assumed I was going nine. I just made the assumption I was putting nine quarts in. Uh, but I put eight and a half quarts total in. At this point, again, I ran through the gears and everything, checked the dipstick tube, and it was a little bit over full. And it wasn't even hot yet. So I drained half a quart back out. Again, I used the same pump. I just switched the hoses around, dumped it back in the jug. Super nice. Highly recommend this little pump. Uh, and then the dipstick red, uh, almost perfect, and the cold side. So I buttoned everything up, tightened the dipstick tube down, dropped this sucker to the ground, took off, ran on the freeway for a little bit, came back, put it back up, burned the freaking crap out of my fingers getting the dipstick tube off, and it was perfect. It was perfect right on the hotline top mark, so that's where I left it. Again, we're checking this while it's running. You can see in the video the engine is running when I'm checking this. I'm, ch <clears throat> I'm checking it in park with the engine running after running it through the gears. So that's about it, guys. Um, if you have to drain any more later and you don't have this pump, it's just as easy to pull the drain plug if you got a drain plug. And uh, yeah, super nice. That's all there is to it. Uh, we just changed transmission fluid. Again, definitely easier the higher in the air you can get it with all four tires off the ground. Um, we got a drain plug now, so next time it'll be super clean to do. No big deal, no big sweat. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you leave me a thumbs up. Hit up the comments down below and leave me something to read later. Uh, again, all products linked in the description below and tools so that it's easy for you to find them. I do get helped if you click on my link and then go buy stuff uh, within 24 hours as long as you don't click on somebody else's link after mine. So I appreciate everybody that does that. PayPal and Zelle down below. If you want to donate directly to the channel, always super appreciated. Guys, there's tons of videos on my channel and there's always more coming. Stay tuned and uh, we'll see you next time. Adios.